This airport, like all big city airports, is a busy place, with planes coming and going day and night. Planes with propellers, and jet planes from all over the world fly in and out of New York's International Airport. Right now, Jet Flight 801 is approaching the gate where passengers for San Francisco will board the plane. A huge moving corridor swings into place. It is called a jetway. Through it, passengers can board the jet plane directly from the waiting room, safely and comfortably, regardless of the weather. The airport bus is already bringing passengers for Flight 801. But Sue and Bob Allen are at the gate ahead of time. They are taking their first airplane trip alone. The passenger supervisor, Mr. Peterson, is there to help them. They can be the first passengers to board the plane, he says, as he leads them to the boarding area. Grandpa Allen is a little worried. You see, Mrs. Allen and I just couldn't make the trip to San Francisco. Their parents, they've just found a house out there, and quite naturally, they want the children with them. Really, there's no problem. We often have children traveling alone. Oh, by the way, let me introduce you to our stewardess. Miss Murray, Mr. and Mrs. Allen. This is Susie and Bobby. Oh, it'll be fun having them on board. Say, it looks like you have another passenger here. Oh, she won't be any trouble. No, no trouble at all, except she can't ride in the main cabin. However, if she has a ticket, I'm sure Mr. Peterson will find room for her. Flight 801, nonstop to San Francisco. Grandpa and Grandma will have to say goodbye here, for only passengers are allowed to go out to the jetway leading to the plane. There's Mr. Peterson just putting Skippy into a box, specially made for dogs and cats that travel by plane. Goodbye, Skippy. Goodbye, Grandpa and Grandma, shout the children. And they hurry on to find a seat in the big and comfortable cabin of the jet. Now the other passengers begin to board the plane through the jetway. While the passengers get seated, Bob and Sue turn to the many interesting sights of the busy airport. Mechanics check and service the big jet engines. Men load luggage into special containers, which are then covered and closed and driven to a loading hatch under the plane. One container after another is then lifted inside the plane and moved into place by a conveyor. Other men load the mail into the plane and food for the passengers. Through the window, Sue can see the traffic control tower. It is higher than the other buildings, so traffic officers can see the planes coming and going. Their job is to direct traffic at the airport. Flight 801, use runway 21 left. Advise when ready to taxi. Captain Mills replies. Idlewell ground control, flight 801, ready to taxi. Now the plane is ready to leave. Before takeoff, Miss Murray helps Bob and Sue fasten their seat belts. Seat belts make takeoffs and landings safer for the passengers. Just before takeoff, the pilot gets his final flight orders this way. And the dispatcher gives the all clear salute, which means, go ahead. And off she goes from the loading ramp to the jet runway. Jets are so big that they need very long runways for takeoffs. And they fly so high that more air and oxygen must be added to the air in the cabin so that the passengers will be able to breathe comfortably. Before takeoff, the hostesses explain the use of supplementary oxygen equipment. Miss Murray points to the backs of the seats where oxygen masks are kept. She shows how to use the masks in case the air in the cabin should drop below normal pressure. Place the mask over your nose and mouth and adjust the headband. Breathe normally and continue to wear your mask. The captain pushes the throttle and the big jet starts off. And finally, the wheels leave the ground. Oh, we're flying, we're flying. Soon they are high over the airport, the four jet engines working at full power. Jet engines have no propellers. The plane moves forward because burnt gases are forced out through the back of the engine. 
These jet engines have enough power to fly at almost 600 miles per hour. The jet is climbing higher and higher, leaving New York City far below. Captain Nils welcomes the passengers aboard. Today we're going to fly at an altitude of 28,000 feet. Our flying time will be just under six hours. Captain Nils, his first officer, and the flight engineer sit in the cockpit of the plane. The cockpit contains hundreds of instruments. These instruments help the pilot fly safely in the busy air lanes. Right now, the captain is setting one of the radio dials. But look who is coming. Children, would you like to have some lunch? Yes, please. Oh, I'd love to. All right, can you get your tray down, Sue? Yes. And while the jet plane flies over the green farmlands of the Middle West, the hostesses prepare lunch trays for their passengers. Here is one for Sue. And one for Bob. See how neatly everything is arranged on the tray? Meat, vegetables, dessert, and milk. Sue is enjoying her lunch. As the passengers eat, the plane continues its westward journey over the Great Plains. Would you like to take a nap? No, thank you. Airplane seats are comfortable. You can push the backrest down and curl up. Many passengers like to take naps. But Bob and Sue have too much to see. Susan, would you like a junior stewardess pin? Oh, yes, thank you. And how would you like to be a junior pilot? Oh, I'd love to. Now Sue and Bob are glad they didn't take a nap. Look now, we're flying over Denver. Miss Murray thinks that a little walk through the plane would make a pleasant change for Sue and Bob. She is taking them to the lounge in the front of the plane. Sue finds a map on the table. Miss Murray, where are we now? We're exactly here, Susie. This is First Officer Jennings. We are about to cross the Continental Divide. The Continental Divide is a ridge of high mountains separating rivers flowing to the east from those flowing to the west. Sue wonders how the pilot can fly or find the airport in cloudy weather. Miss Murray tells her about the special instruments that guide the plane at night and in bad weather. Radio signals direct the plane on its way and to the landing field, almost as if it were gliding along a highway. The captain calls the San Francisco Center. Over Lake Tahoe at 28,000. Flight 801 cleared to Oakland Omni. Cross Sacramento at 11,000 or above. Susan, since you are a junior stewardess, would you like to pass gum for me today? Okay. What about me? Oh, I have a box for you, too. There's one for you. And this one for you, Susan. Sue and Bob's parents are at the airport well ahead of time. The passenger agent has assured them that the airplane is already over the San Francisco Bay. Passen your seatbelts, please. Already? Sue and Bob are surprised. Wasn't this a quick flight? Below, they can see the city where their new home will be. Sue and Bob can scarcely wait to see their parents. And here is the airport. Slowly and carefully, their jet approaches the landing field. And soon the wheels touch the runway in San Francisco. The ground control officer directs the plane to its proper gate. Bye, Susie and Bob. You've been wonderful passengers. Out go Bob and Sue, running to meet their parents. And here comes Miss Murray with Skippy. Bob and Sue can't wait to tell their parents all about their first jet airplane trip. 
Now they understand better why people say...